What is the best beginner lens that you can get for your camera? So in truth, a good beginner lens is a lens that allows you to cover the fundamental compositional focal range um, so that you can get a better understanding to graduate to a more professional type of look uh, is a lens that covers the range of 24 to 70 millimeters. These three lenses by itself, a standard zoom, a prime wide and a prime portraiture is gonna cover 99% of your photo and video needs for the next 10 years. Now it depends on the kind of camera that you have what that means in terms of what lens you should get. So for example, if you're on a crop sensor camera, such as uh, a Canon M6 um, or a Sony um, A6000 or 5000 series, um, where you have a crop of a, like 1.5, 1.6, then you wanna look at a lens that gives you anywhere between 15, 16 or 17 millimeters all the way up to about maybe 50 or 55 millimeters. So for example, this lens right here, uh, this is for a Canon the EFS, uh, it, it's 17 to 55 millimeters. And what that means is this is a good standard lens. This lens will allow me to cover all of my major focal lengths from beginning to end. Now, this lens here, a 17 to 55 millimeter, basically on a crop sensor covers the 24 to 70, a little bit more uh, than that in terms of its actual focal range. On this camera, right now I've got an 18 to uh, about uh, 35, but in terms of the actual focal length, we're looking at about, about 28 to maybe uh, 50 millimeter in terms of its focal zoom range. Um, on this camera, I've got a 50 millimeter uh, looking at me, but because of the crop sensor, it's actually closer to maybe uh, an 85 uh, or 75. Uh, whereas on this one right here, I'm actually pointing with a 85 millimeter lens to kind of get those, uh, get that detail shot. Now the question though is how much time do you need to be spending with a uh, standard zoom lens in order for you to know what kind of lens that you should graduate to. Now, first of all, I would say about 20 hours. You spend about 20 hours with a decent zoom lens. And it doesn't even have to be like a, a little bit more premium lens such as this one, but it can be the kit lens that you have. So if you have say a Panasonic, it would probably be a 12 to 35 or a 12 to 60. Um, 12 on a pan the reason I'm saying 12 because Panasonic cameras like the Lumix GH4 or the GH5 which is uh, this one right here uh, you get about a 2x crop and what that means is a 12 millimeter is actually the equivalent of say the field of view of 24 millimeters that you would get on a full frame now once you spend about 20 hours with uh, a, a good zoom lens then you'll kind of get to understand what kind of desired intent in terms of composition and focal lengths that you're going to be uh, using now in my case after i had spent quite a bit of time with a uh, 18 to 55 millimeter lens on a canon eos m uh, I realized what I wanted was something a little bit wider than 18, which was giving me 28 millimeter field of view uh, on a crop sensor. Uh, I wanted something more like a 25, uh, 24, and I wanted to zoom out. And so one of my first lens purchases was uh, this bad boy right here, a vintage Canon FD uh, 24 millimeter F2, right? And so a good lens to graduate for me, I went vintage. And the reason I went vintage is because vintage lenses tend to be a lot more affordable. They tend to cost less money. Uh, and so that way I can kind of play around with and get a familiar familiarity with what I like and what I don't like. So um, generally speaking, a 24 millimeter lens such as this one, uh, whether you go vintage, another one that I ended up getting later was this one right here, uh, which is a Canon EFM 22 millimeter F2. And the reason I got this after this was because this has autofocus. The reason I got this uh, 24 millimeter F2 prime lens 
was because uh, I realized that I wanted something that was wide and fast, meaning it would be bright. Uh, generally speaking, when you have a lens and you want to know whether or not it's fast or bright, look at the f-stop. And the best way to remember this is f is for friction. The less friction in terms of light, photonic friction, then the faster, the brighter the lens will be. After using my uh, 24 millimeter uh, prime lens, because I knew I wanted something wide for indoors, and also regularly using my uh, standard zoom lens, one of the things that I realized I was running into was that I was always wishing that I could zoom in more, right? Uh, I wanted to get more uh, details, get tighter shots, whether it was for events and, but I still wanted to be uh, indoors. So it had to be a relatively fast lens. And so uh, one of the things that I decided to invest my money into was this uh, uh, Canon uh, 80 to 200 millimeter EF lens. It's a vintage autofocusing lens. It's uh, one of the first uh, vintage prime lens uh, that had come out. And um, now this, is, this thing is kind of heavy. It's, uh, it's uh, relatively chunky. It helped me fulfill the intention that I had for the lens, which was to be able to get up close, get details of people, and, uh, and still be able to get good quality images indoors. After about a year of running with these two lenses on the regular, just general uh, run and gun type of stuff, and um, you know, uh, more extended reach indoors with this long lens, uh, what I wanted was, I wanted something a little bit more fast and uh, light and prime still to replace this. And what I did was, uh, I replaced this with this guy right here which is the Canon EFM 22 millimeter F2. So similar to this lens. Now this is 22 millimeters and this is 24 millimeters. So in theory, this is wider, right? They're both the same uh, in terms of speed and brightness, uh, but this one has autofocus. It's smaller, but because it's 22 millimeters directly native to the Canon EFM mount. So this would go right on this lens right here. Um, the challenge that I run into with, uh, with that's different from this is that this is actually wider, but this doesn't have autofocus. This doesn't have uh, the same lightness in terms of weight. Like this is, this feels like nothing. This feels like there's a little bit of heft to it. It's made of metal or some sort of composite. That's really hard. So this was one of the first things that I, uh, uh that I actually looking back, uh, one of the things I realized is that I wish I had autofocus, right? I, this is not an autofocus lens. This is. And so, um, had I gotten this, this, in fact, I would suggest is probably one of the first lenses I would uh, encourage anybody to get after the zoom lens. Uh, after you get your standard zoom lens, get yourself a fast prime. I got a manual prime lens, vintage, because it was cheap and affordable, but guess what? This is also relatively cheap and affordable. It goes for about 250. After you've been shooting on the zoom lens, in terms of your standard zoom lens, and you've been shooting on your, uh, uh, your, your fast prime, which is a wide angle lens, you could probably gonna be like, hey, you know what? I want something that also gets in tight, but not too tight. Nice portraiture look, such as this one, uh, which is uh, the appropriate option here is a 50 millimeter, which gives you this look. Um, and so this is uh, a good 50 millimeter. Uh, f 1.8 almost every camera system has a 50 millimeter f 1.8 just keep in mind that when you get a 50 millimeter f 1.8 on a crop sensor lens uh, or crop, crop sensor system it's the equivalent of something like 75 millimeters which is great because it'll still give you that portraiture it'll give you that compression it'll give you that background separation and in all seriousness if you have these three lenses right? Get the standard zoom or the kit lens as your first. And if you want something a little bit more professional, upgrade to a constant aperture. So let's say, and what I mean by constant aperture, going back to photonic friction. So let's say you have an F 3.5 to 5.6, uh, 16 to 55 or 24 to 70 equivalent lens. And you're like, Hey, you know what? I want to be able to film indoors while still getting that blurry background and better low light and sharper image quality, you can upgrade to a little bit more premium standard zoom lens, this one right here. 
but uh, at the same time, you want to stay indoors, you want that wide angle, get that wide angle prime. Uh, at the same time, you want that uh, portrait prime that's also fast, gives you that nice separation like this, then get yourself a 50 f1.8. These three lenses by itself, a standard zoom, a prime wide and a prime portraiture is going to cover 99% of your photo and video needs for the next 10 years. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, you know, this right here, if I were to probably lose all of my lenses, right? Except these three, I love all my lenses, by the way, I hope I never lose any of them. But if I were to lose all of my lenses, except for these three, I'd be fine. I'd be set. I could still do work. I could still produce good quality images uh, without much issue. So just as a review, your beginner lens is going to be whatever lens that your camera came with. Your first upgrade from the lens that the camera came with is to get into a standard zoom lens, which is with a constant aperture, right? So a, uh, if you're on a crop sensor, that would be a 17 to 50 or 17 to 28 or a uh, 17 to 55 or 16 to 55, something like that. Something that's equivalent to a 24 to 70 millimeter focal length range, which is fundamental focal lengths for basic compositional needs. And then after that, you're most likely going to want to upgrade or graduate to one of these two lenses, right? Either a 50 millimeter F1.8 typically, or a uh, 24 esque or similar to a 24 or wider millimeter. Uh, in this case, I have a, a ra relatively fast lens, which is an F2. You can get F2.8. Um, and in my case, right, uh, my journey was a little bit uh, in the sense of I started with a vintage lens, a 24 millimeter F2, but I realized I wanted something lighter. Uh, although this is hardy, I could probably beat somebody up with it, uh, knock somebody out with this lens. Uh, but I wanted something a little bit lighter, a little bit faster, uh, or rather uh, something that was autofocus capable. And so I replaced uh, this lens. In fact, not with this lens, I replaced it with another 24 millimeter F2, but because it didn't, it wasn't native to the system, uh, it ended up becoming about that big, right? So when I compared it to my other, uh, my previous uh, 24 millimeter, it was just about the same. So that's why I ended up um, graduating to an, a native lens uh, that was intended for the mount that the camera is on. And so that resulted in a 20, uh, 22 millimeter F2. Um, that's on the Canon EFM system, right? Uh, you can also get something from Sigma, which is a little bit more pricey, which is a 16 millimeter F1.4. Um, that Sigma lens, the 16 millimeter F1.4, is a lens that you can get for almost any system. You can get it for the Canon E mount, the Canon, uh, not the Canon, Sony E mount, Canon EFM mount, as well as the uh, Micro Four Thirds mount. Um, but just keep in mind, whatever system that you get it for, you have to ensure that that number, 16 millimeter, is multiplied by whatever the sensor's crop factor is. So if it's on a Panasonic such as this, it would be multiplied by two. So 16 becomes equivalent to something like 32 millimeters, still in the wide angle range. Uh, on a, um, actually this is another Panasonic, I actually switched cameras because my battery died. But on a, uh, uh, on a Canon uh, system, that's a crop sensor, it would be similar to a 24 millimeter. Same thing on a Sony, equivalent to a 24 or 23 millimeter. Uh, but anyway, in this case, this is a 22 millimeter. So on a Canon, this is actually equivalent to a 35. So, uh, but anyway, like if you get, these are your three basic lenses that you want to build up to. Uh, and when you get these three lenses, then it's going to basically cover all of your bases. Uh, this gives you versatility, but it's not small. <laughs> uh, it gives you the full 24 to uh, 75 uh, or in this case, 24 to 80. Um, now, if you're gonna get a standard zoom lens as a constant aperture, you have a couple of options, uh, but affordability is gonna be the key thing that you're gonna play into. So generally speaking, regardless of what system you're on, right, whether it's Canon, Panasonic, or uh, Sony, you're gonna have a kit lens. Kit lens is gonna carry you through. On my Canon EOS M, the original one, um, it carried, I carry the kit lens, the 18 to 55, for like over five years before I upgraded to uh, this bad boy right here. 
Um, but then I realized that I wanted something with autofocus and I got the uh, Canon EOS M6 Mark II um, that uh, with which I then also paired this lens first with an adapter. Autofocus is really well. I went with Canon because they're generally, um, they may not be the best cameras, but they also have the most affordable line of autofocus lenses that go back over a decade. So affordability was a key factor um, and good quality lenses too. Uh, like this same lens, like this standard zoom lens on a Sony would be like, this is like 350 at most used off of eBay. Um, uh, on a Sony, it would probably run me uh, at least eight, $900. If you want some reach, right? And you wanna, you know, go out in events or outdoors and things like that and really get some, uh, you know, bird shots or long form, you know, those really compressed portraits, uh, something like a 70 to 200 or an 80 to 200 in this case. Um, this guy right here, uh, because it's a quality lens, it cost me about $400. Um, however, you could probably get a cheaper version, an F4 lens perhaps for maybe $200. But generally speaking, if you stick to these three lenses, a standard zoom, a 50 prime, and a 24 or, or 35 prime, both of these being fast lenses, you're going to be good to go. I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comments below. I'll see you soon.